Welcome, welcome. We are so glad you are here. Happy International Women's Day. This is the perfect day to gather and hear poems that call us into the unity of passionate resistance. This is a day when all women and all good men stand with the women of Ukraine, the women of Yemen, of Uganda, Uyghur women, Syrian women, the women of Afghanistan and Atlanta, Georgia. Today we stand with all the women of the world and say, may we in our lifetime bring about a world of peace, of justice, of freedom. Welcome, welcome. Penn International is home to so many extraordinary poets around the world. And beginning in 2020 with our Free the World, Free the Word, Lockdown, Locked In, the Women's Writers Committee of International Penn, under the robust and able leadership of Zoe Rodriguez, has been curating and hosting global poetry Zooms to hold us solid in community and make this space and time to hear the extraordinary, fiery, sweet, and splendidly diverse voices of our creative community. Wherever you are, in whatever time zone, here on the planet Earth, our common home, whether it's day for you or night, whether your country is at peace or ground beneath the terrible wheel of war or poverty, we can stand together in poetry and solidarity, our voices lifted in grief, in anger, in resistance to tyranny, to any and all restrictions on freedom, justice, peace, and the right to write. So here we are. Yay. I love it. We're so glad you're here with us. For our guests, I'm going to introduce our tradition of the empty chair, which is something very powerful and beautiful that we always do in our pen meetings. We begin our gatherings and our celebrations with an act of remembrance that we who are here are privileged to be free, free to write, free to dream and publish, and we must never take that for granted. So we remember and we honor a writer who does not have those privileges, a writer in prison, a journalist that has been disappeared and in too many countries, in Mexico, murdered for the act of writing truth to power. Today, we honor Meryl Simsek, a Kurdish poet, author, and journalist from Turkey, a single mother to two teenage boys, arrested and on trial for the charge of making terrorist propaganda. It is my pleasure to introduce Aurelia Dondo, Europe Program Coordinator for Penn International Turkey Action Group who will be sharing our most recent news about Merrill's arrests, potential sentences, and her trials. Welcome, Aurelia. In December 2020, anti-terror police detained writer, poet, and Kurdish pen member Meral Shimshek in Malatya province, Eastern Turkey. We may not hear her voice, but now we will see her face. But Al Shimshek was released pending trial and placed under a travel ban. She was formally charged in January 2021 with membership of a terrorist organization and making terrorist propaganda. The indictment notably mentions a short story, Karzela, featured in the anthology Kurdistan Plus 100 in which 12 contemporary Kurdish writers imagine a country they could call their own by the year 2046. In October 2021, a court in Malatya found Shinshek guilty of making terrorist propaganda, sentenced her to one year and three months in prison and lifted her travel ban. Her appeal is ongoing. In a separate case, Shimshek faces up to five years in prison on the charge of entering a restricted military area after she fled to Greece in June 2021 and was pushed back to Turkey. Penn International calls on the Turkish authorities to overturn her conviction and drop all charges against her. Thank you. Her silence roars 
as does the silence of all our writers in jail cells across the world. We invite all centers and members and all of us to engage on Meryl Shimshek's behalf by contacting Aurelia and the Penn International Turkey Action Group, and we're going to put their email in the chat. Thank you. Today, we are going to dedicate this Free the Word Global Poetry Zoom to the heroic people of Ukraine. There is not a one of us here, and I know not a one of you, whose heart is not breaking for the indomitable people of Ukraine and wondering how best that we may support them in their courageous and noble fight against tyranny and the outrage of this brutal invasion of their sovereign nation. Penn Ukraine has provided us many ways, and we invite you to visit the Women's Writers Committee's website, which we're posting right up in front of you, where we have put on our website the Penn Ukraine list of the many ways we can support, assist, and learn more about the history behind this attack on civilian Ukrainian lives, their homes, their fields, and their freedom. Please visit our piwwc.org website and join in solidarity with the heroic people of Ukraine. And now, now we are blessed to see and hear from our poets. Let's have some poetry. We are beginning today with the award winning Ukrainian poet Ia Kiva, translator, journalist, member of Penn Ukraine, refugee from Donetsk due to the Russian-Ukrainian war. She is the author of two collections of poetry, A Little Further From Heaven and The First Page of Winter, and a book of interviews with contemporary Belarusian writers about the protests in Belarus. We will wake others. Welcome, Ia, welcome. Uh, thank you, Judith. Uh, perhaps I will read with my mistakes. I'm sorry. Uh, um, my, um, my poems uh, in uh, Catherine Young translation. Uh, is there a hot war in the tap? Is a cold war in the tap? How is that there is absolutely no war? It was promised for after lunch, with some announcement with our own eyes, war will arrive at 1400 hours. And it's only three hours without war, six hours without war. What if there no war by the time night falls? We can't do laundry without war, can't make dinner, can't drink, to plan without war. And it's already eight days without war. We smell bad. Our wives don't want to lie, to lie in bed with us. The children have forgotten to smile and complain. Why did we always think we'd never run out of war? Let's start, yes. Let's start visiting neighbors to borrow war on the other side of our green park. Start fearing to spill war in the road. Start considering life without war and temporary hardship. In these parts, it's considered unnatural. If war doesn't curse through the pipes, into every house, into every throat. Uh, the second poem, you will think you're turned on Bach. In the speakers are military march. You think that Yasha Hafiz, you hear the plaintive uh, whistling of shells. The violin sounds coarser. The caratura soprano of war is an act of hire. Blood fills your ears. The boss been killed. And uh, could I uh, could I read one poem in original? 
Okay, I'm I'm from Donetsk, which uh, this is a uh, uh, Russian speaking region, uh, and there is poem in Russian about uh, refugee. Uh, her name is Marina. Я говорит Марина человек беглец. Ювенальное море стыда, войны, обвинений, наступающее на тело спящего города. Я заяц, танцующий на одной уцелевшей ноге. Цирковой, хороводный. Слышишь, как скрипят половицы времени, в лапы брошенные в мои, у самых корней крестятся не в попад. Я продолжает она, оно, человек, ад. Ночь в глазах моих просверлила зрачок. Я стою на весах мировых и раскачиваю отчуждаемые свидетельства. Акт насилия так давно начался, что у каждого действия поросль восстала. Я утверждает оно, воспаленная косточка во рту пламенеющего винограда. Плановая дефлорация желез. Я не знаю в лицо говорящего, но в этих пустотах прежде водили животные со множеством языков и ходили пешком под уродливым сияющим колпаком. И вот двери травы закрываются на навзничь, пленки света летят. Я оказываюсь в животе бесконечной дороги. Здесь под каждой границей блестит столовая ртуть, и предательски пахнет жженым сахаром домом, и свечою горит на снегу след мой простывший. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you, Ia. Thank you so much. And what a privilege to get to hear a poem read in Ukrainian this day and by a Ukrainian woman. I, I just am so glad that you are able to be with us. And that, that tough irony speaking to us out of this poem. How is it there's absolutely no war? It was promised for after lunch. It's three hours without war, six hours. It's eight days without war. We smell bad and our wives won't lie with us. In these parts, it's considered unnatural if war doesn't flow through pipes into every throat. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you so much for that. Our next poet, Linda Maria Barros, is the vice president of French Pen. She has published six books of poetry. Her most recent collection, The Boneless Swimmer, Ah, oh, I think I see. All right, so there's two books here, The Boneless Swimmer and Metropolitan Legends. And The Boneless Swimmer, I believe, but, but she might correct us, was awarded the grand prize for poetry 2021 of the French Writers' Society. She has won the International Francophone Prize of 2021 of the Montreal Poetry Festival and the Rambeau Prize 2021 of the Poetry House from Paris. Welcome, Linda. Hi, everybody. In fact, that's only a book. One book, and from this book, I'm going to, to read a poem, Touch Screen Reality. We screamed, we rolled on the ground, and we soared. Between our tower blocks at the edge of town, night's pistons slowly rose. And we climbed in the trucks and we drank like flags. The girls unfurled along the streets. We danced and we spat and we drank until morning, until kilometer zero. Then the hunters came and knocked at our door. They were angry that we didn't awake. They sharpened their beaks on the walls, weeping on dark corridors, and they loaded their guns. They masturbated. Perhaps black rubber truncheons lit our bruises from close up, cleft our cheekbones while we danced like savages. 
reality rose in our crawl. And then came those released from intensive care, but they didn't recognize us. They didn't outstretch their hands. They no longer asked us for light through the touchscreen vitrines. Perhaps the snipers who rooted on the rooftops. They sharpened their beaks on our glass ribs. They blew into our TB patient tubes and slowly depressed night's pistons. But we, furling flags, no longer recognize them. Translated by Alistar Yambli. Thank you. Wow, I love that powerful, um, angry, strong voice with the lyrical writing mixed and woven all through it, sharpened their beaks on the walls, lit our bruises from close up, reality rose in our craw. Mm, lyrical poetry, rich and deep with horror and anger. Ah, thank you, Linda. And now I bring you one of our dear friends in pen, the poet Inga Gaile, an award-winning Latvian poet, president of Latvian pen, prose writer, playwright, performance artist, and theater director. Inga explores with a very unique brand of humor, inner states of being, her own experiences, the everyday lives of women and stigmatized groups of society, all why, while promoting equal rights and being a mother. Welcome, Inga. Hello, everyone. Slava Ukraini, Heroim Slava. I will read the poem, Damascus Autumn. Damascus Autumn has arrived in our land. Many of us will never be able to inhale the air that flutters round the bodies of birds in the bright blue sky over the foliage gold. We want to leave the house and go to the alley. We dreamt about it all these years when we didn't know each other. Not even to find the house at the end of the lane, simply to reach the green shade and walk hand in hand through the alley, the ones that used to lead to the house. I remember the quiet girl in the green meadow, and I understand she knew it already then. Then Damascus autumn has arrived, the time when we are unable to be, only able to be quiet, to stare at burning maples and see the world, how painfully beautiful it is in the days before we die. That young woman who has skin that radiates light no longer eats, Across the sea from Damascus, she is visited by the sighs of dying people every time she remembers bread. My face dissolves in sarin gust. I know I can do it all. Under the blue skies, leaves burn as do the guts of small children. They die like angels without scaring the world's people who look at them from above. They lie on the ground like fine china babies next to birded men. There is no war in our land. There are no earthquakes. There is spring in our land, gentle with green sunny hands. It lifts us out of our beds and puts us at the end of the alley. We cannot return home. No, when we have seen it. Thank you. The imagery in that poetry is absolutely astonishing. Yes, I mean, everyone who loves poetry can absolutely hear what we just heard there, staring at the burning maples, see the world, how painfully beautiful, visited by the sighs of dying people every time she remembers bread. Mm. The poem makes us need to breathe, yeah? Oh, now, yes, wonderful. We have activist and Black Earth Institute fellow, member of 
PEN America, Pamela Yushuk. Pamela Yushuk howled out her seven books of poems, including her most recent, Bloodflower, one of Booklist's most notable book, books, 2015. Her collection, Refugee, is forthcoming in May from Red Hen Press. Welcome, Pam. Roof, supersonic rip saws, tearing through finch song, spring buds and St. Francis, who cradles the concrete wolf on our patio where hummingbirds feed. Desert sleeps far from the hiss of cruise missiles, pulverizing Ukraine streets. Putin's emails incinerate high rises, amputating lives. 1,000 towns destroyed. A Russian tank clanks, flattens a small car. Another swerves into a city bus. Troops crawl with assault rifles to strafe the Nicholas Bridge. Bombs burst craters in schools, homes, landmarks, parks. Putin blusters, he must protect Russian rebels. A friend posts, we are all Ukrainians now. Putin says, we are all Russians. What's his real game? Soviet satellites, lies, and blood spattering cobbled streets, tattered sheets ripped for makeshift bandages to staunch torn arteries, the severed limbs of teens. Today I sing for my cousins shuddering in the Kiev metro underground. Others who become instant guerrilla fighters, their hands that held babies and lovers last week, cradling AR-15s. They will never surrender. I sing for my Belarus ancestors who can't stop crying over the corpses of their children, curled like charred snail shells in snow falling on the ashes of their homes, Stalin torched. Who starts a war during a pandemic in winter, except another Caesar in an Armani suit, immaculately tailored, the same metallic gray as a missile's stunted wings. De Cuja. thank you. Thank you, Pam. Whoa, who starts another war in winter? Ugh. It is a roar, and we're grateful for that roar. St. Francis cradling the concrete wolf. We are all Ukrainians now. Now we welcome our friend, Diane Regimbal. She is a poet and the president of the Women's Writers Committee of Pen Quebecois, she will read in French a new poem on the current war being waged against Ukraine. Welcome, Diane. Hello. From a, in the clearest of light, au plus clair de la lumière. Cours. Fais courir la pensée. Pousse cela au bout de tes doigts, le temps l'irradie. Compose des partitions de soulèvement, réalise des vœux, écris liberté sur un pétale, aie confiance en ce qui exhorte à venir. Suis le poème traversé par les ombres de l'histoire, lance les dés, va dans l'ailleurs des pas, fouille au plus clair de la lumière, invente une somme de gestes, pour mieux tenir dans l'entendement du vivant. Telle la douleur, le mal qu'on enferme et qu'on retient, atteint les mots qui creusent des sillons dans les veines, se cogne au sang dans la bouche, au sursaut entre les cuisses. Écoute le cœur immense des solitudes. Il transporte le silence de l'enfant, tapis entre les endormis et les couches d'embrun. Enfonce ton corps jusqu'au trésor venu des eaux. 
L'oiseau dégage ses ailes de la branche, pousse son cri, fend le vent. Aime ta langue, ce qu'elle échappe, ignorée. Aime ses rythmes, ses assonances, ses débordements et ses vides. Aime ce qu'elle donne, un éclairage direct sur sa portée de sens. Elle t'emplit d'un tempo qui mène ta pensée à l'horizon. Tu ne t'en rends pas compte, mais ta langue joue avec toi. Crée le scénario des voltiges, spirale façonnée par l'espace qui englobe tes pas. Va acquérir les mots, leur porter des récits. Oblitère tes frayeurs, ne crains pas ton feu. Ces flammes courent, s'enroulent, ces langues autour des corps, lumière et ténèbres. Ne fuis rien, culbute dans la vase, n'éteins pas ton brasier. Reviens, repars, armé de tison. Les temples, harnachés à ton dos, remplis de prophéties comme colonnes mémorielles, renferment les vents narratifs parcourus de cendres. N'efface pas leur ardeur, rameute leurs secrets. Now a poem for the proud Ukraine. Poème pour la fière Ukraine. Mon petit cœur ouvert à toi, peuple ukrainien, à tes douleurs, à tes larmes, à ta dévastation. Où trouver la paix lorsque le pouvoir de l'autre s'aliène à lui-même et te fait mal jusqu'à vouloir ta disparition je sais la force vive d'exister, plus puissante que la mort. Tenir debout, en terre grondée, fracassée, et rêver de liberté. La lumière traverse les froids, elle t'atteint comme la beauté de l'amour lié à tes terres, emblématique, jeu, bleu et jaune, ciel et terre. Thank you. What a gorgeous reading. Those words enter our body like, like wine and like silk. In There's some English in the poem for Ukraine that says, the light crosses the dread. It reaches you like beauty. Mm. Thanks, Deanne. And now our friend from Beirut, the poet Bana Beydoun, a member of Penn Lebanon, a Lebanese poet and writer. Her first poetry book, The Guardian of Illusion, came out in 2013, followed by the short story, The Pizza Delivery in Beirut Noir. And her upcoming poetry collection is due for release in 2022. And it tells about her experience during the 2019 uprising in Lebanon, Welcome, Banna. A liquid wall. Uh, a poem that is translated from Arabic and is dedicated to the Lebanese uprising that was brutally oppressed. I woke up in a dream. I walked for a long time. I met everyone I know. They were themselves and I was myself. I didn't dare ask, who were we then before? Is it this dream of our own making or are we wandering in someone else's dream? in a land not ours. Our mouths were masked. It wasn't the virus trying to kill us, but an immense fog girding the air. They were tossing tear gas canisters and advancing through the fog toward us. We were their mirage and they ours, but it was something else 
that flowed between us, a wall of vapor that divided us, but the haze was deep and painful, like the rage that fathers breathe into our chests, like a blood stain of which all trace is lost, but whose imagined scent pervade the mind to the point of nausea. In the parking, I remember nothing but the green light that casts its aspect upon the place and the wailing of sirens atop huge armored vehicles on the lookout for escapees. Sana returned to the square, the dust thickening beneath her eyes. She tries to explain with her bloodied hands. Five rubber grenades went through her middle. It wasn't terror that clouded her gaze. It was something erratic, like those intermittent blanks in her voice. Her gaze left her eyes with a difficulty, like her voice. The problem wasn't the fog, but with what we could see now with full clarity. Many returned that night with but a single eye. The darkness grew arm and legs. At the end of the road, we saw them rounding up those of us who were left and disappearing. Shout your name aloud, shout it, shout. May you wake up, may we wake up. When morning came, they swept the area clean among the ashes and the spent canisters of gas. They found the remains of so many eyes. They didn't return them to their owners. What happens to an eye separated from its mate? We close the eyes of the dead so as not to see their final look of astonishment that passes through us like a ghost, as though we didn't exist. But those scattered eyes continued to wander. Their gaze remained suspended in that place, like an eye doomed to eternal wakefulness. And no matter how much they tried to look away, that gaze was resurrected every time Night fell over the place. They thought they were being chased by ghosts. They didn't know they were the ghosts. Thank you. Ow! Oh, that fierce, fierce beauty. I think really poetry has this unique capability of holding that paradox so magnificently. What a gorgeous reading. Oh, that line, the problem wasn't the fog, but with what we could see now with full clarity. You close the eyes of the dead, not to see their final look of astonishment. Good, good, and good. The imagined light invades the mind. They didn't know they were the ghosts. Thank you, Vanna. Wow. <laughs> the poetry today is so fantastic, so powerful. Thank you all, and wait to hear what's coming. Oh. All right, next we have a wonderful poet who's been with us many times, I'm so glad to say. Oh, we have our Drajita Charna, poet aphorist, holistic healer, loving flamenco and astrology. She has lived and worked in Slovenia, Italy, Spain, and now in Belgium. A member of Slovene Pen, Dragita speaks five languages and writes in most of them. Writing for her is another way to love. Welcome, Dragita. There is no light that can illuminate the darkness in the mind. One such no, big, determined, majestic no, it runs beside me, 
It searches the way into me. It's looking at me. It seeks a moment to scream for all the no's in future, to release all the no's from the past and turns them into strength. One such no for all the abuses of the world. One such no for all the violences of the world. One such no to all manipulations, wars. One such no for all the women in the world who were silenced, ignored, repressed. One wild no to separate the paths in the past on the way forward. That way, the path will be pure and time and rest of pain. Še toliko luči ne razsvetli tame v glavi. Entak ne. Velik, odločen, mogočen. Ne. Teče ob meni. Išče pot vame ne gleda. Išče trenutek, da zakriči za vse neje naprej. Da osvobodi vse tiste pred njim in jih spremeni v moč. En tak ne za vse zlorabe sveta. En tak ne za vsa nasilja sveta. En tak ne manipulacijam, vojnam. En tak ne za vse ženske sveta, ki so bile zatrte, vtišane prezrte. En divji ne, da razmeji poti za nazaj in smer za naprej. Tako bo počista in čas slečen bo lečen. Thank you. Wow, one wild no, one wild no. And in Slovene, so fantastic to hear one wild no to separate the paths from the past. Thank you, Dragita. Now we get to hear a poem. This was really a hope, a great hope of mine that we would be able to hear um, a poet from Pan uh, Myanmar. And today we have Mama Thiri with us. She is a humanitarian worker. She works for an NGO in Myanmar and she writes and composes poems as her hobby. I am hoping that the poem she's going to read to you today is a poem that she held in her memory because she was in prison in 2012 for her peace building work in Myanmar and she was not allowed to have pen or paper. She worked to remember it every day, saying it to herself over and over and she published it on her blog after she was released. The poem is in Burmese and it is about missing her children from prison and looking for justice. Welcome, Mama Thiri. Hi, uh, Judith uh, Minglava. Good evening from Myanmar. May I read another one? Sorry. <laughs> okay, thank Certainly, you. Certainly, me, Mama. That is fine. Read what you wish. Okay. Thank you, thank you. This print was I wrote uh, during the pandemic and it was published in the Mindanao Peace Building Institute website. So I will read that print. Sorry for that. I, I actually, I proposed the two prints and this is the second one. Thank you for allowing me. The title is Carl Messi. When she got there the first time a decade ago, she didn't like those small fruits with the taste quite sour. She saw everyone's meal with the tiny citrus fruits they had with soy sauce. They are fond of that, like they enjoy the nyapi she used to eat. But she only loves its aroma as she was not used to eating it. When she got there a second time in the following times, she started liking its juice, although it is strongly so. She enjoyed it like everyone there since then. 
which is lovely, calm and sea. She loves its tang and she loves its smell now. When the world got its illness about 700 days ago, then the world became sick and came to a halt and humans were under their own restraint or rules kept them in their nest. Millions of people call for help for a cause of stresses. She was also one of those in look for MHPSS. There is a small space on the rooftop she used to walk. A small green plot has been started with some pineapple plants. Then many more other plants walk into their her comrades. In a beautiful tiny rooftop garden has grown up there. Then she can be seen there every early morning and every late evening, caring for and talking to her plants and flowers. Once she already missed her lovely Kalmasi, Kalmasi, after many days with no moving to other places, her soul. It happened 500 days ago when she drove only for some plants and trees more and luckily found her calmancy and a garden nursery. She didn't know that she would be delighted that much when she suddenly saw a sparsely Philippine lemon plant. It was not in their own land. She had no idea how they arrived to her country, but she just happy. Her AM and her PM have been filled up with caring for them. Days and nights keep going until another terrible day came in. Her own land has been under the spell of a cause. It started 390 days ago. It is added to the world difficult times before. The very weak moment for everyone has arrived, but no one was invited. The blood, the sounds of bombs, the gunshots, the lives lost, the fire, the brand up, the crime, the fear, the houses are left empty in the towns. The displaced people have filled the forests. The tears of murders are flooded across the country. The months of the wounded people have been hurt from everywhere, everywhere. The many people who have a safe place, nowhere, nowhere. The children, the women, the elders, all people are insecure anywhere, anywhere. Her nights became very difficult to pass over again. Her days became filled with apprehension of unseen things, but her currency has been growing with no worries. It new birth came out cheerfully and bloomed gracefully, and tiny babies stand out soundlessly. They somehow gave her relief with their wonderful fresh neck. Synchronous. Now she has her first ever own calmancy. She picked it up with full of love. Then she smelled it, and she smells it, and she smelled it. Calmancy is not just a calmancy for she. Thank you. Oh, wow. Yes, I'm so glad you read us that poem, Mama Theory. This is really what Pound meant when he said news that stays, that stays news, and that we can hear this from one of our friends telling us this story, children, women, everywhere, everywhere. A fruit and a war, a garden and a war. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Our next poet comes to us from Penn, Chile, Cristina Wormul. Cristina says 
She is a poet of delusional dreams, impossible loves, and friendships tattooed on the heart. She is a poet riding the moon, embraced by the sun, and in love with desire. Welcome, Christina. Hi. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my English is not very well. Yeah. And I'm going to read my poem in English and then in Spanish. It's a very short one. It's, uh, its name is Sleepless Silence. In this silent city, there are noisy people who shoot their love for living, silent before fatal destiny. In this frightened city, there are birds that want to chirp a beautiful love song. The pain only allows them to whistle. In this terrified city, the dogs mew, cats don't even bark and don't dare to dance. In this closed city, locking wind and sun, the clouds are lost. The moon does not taste like kisses and the pale specter that inhabit it, they don't even know how to breathe. And in Spanish, <laughs> silencio insomne. En esta ciudad silenciosa, hay gente bulliciosa que gritan su amor por vivir, emudecen ante fatal destino. En esta ciudad espantada hay pájaros que quieren trinar una preciosa canción de amor. El dolor solo les permite silbar. En esta ciudad aterrada los perros maullan, los gatos ni siquiera ladran y yo no me atrevo a bailar. En esta ciudad encerrada, carente de viento y sol, las nubes se pierden, la luna no sabe a besos y los pálidos espectros que la habitan no saben ni respirar. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. I love that repetition, the silent city, the terrified city, the closed city, and then I don't dare to dance. And of course, the clouds are lost. The moon does not taste like kisses. They don't even know how to breathe. Beautiful, beautiful poesia. Muchas gracias. Coming to us from Ugandan pen, we have the poet Arinda Daphin. She lives in Uganda, Jinja, where she writes poems and raises her baby star. Welcome, Arinda. Beautifully chaotic. Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? She is a genius with genes that kick ass, not the genes on her ass, the genes that gave her us. A penguin with a coat of fur, genuine, her hairs go far. Legs, thighs, she's layered with feathers, little feathers, light as a breath, black feathers, shiny and soft, between arms and thighs, a bed of hairs to play with. Sigh, it's a wonder to be that hairy and still be gentle to the touch. Who is she? Who is she? It's a wonder, she's not prickly, really. She doesn't shave, save for days when she feels like it. She is 20 feet tall like Erica Badu, Quiso Bando hide and sick in her Afro, she is glorious. Creatures sing the Gloria at her groin area. She is a goddess and the gods know this. She might be a reject of today's civilization. They want to sieve her, sieve her wheat and they call it chaff. And yet that is her golden crown, her wild hairs entangled with cotton debris, her nails darkened from a walk amongst trees. That's her, that's her. Ask no more who she is, who she is. At her shrine, a party brews. Come ye who seek freedom. 
enter her kingdom and find yourself. The area code is 256. The dress code is jeans, ragged and ripped, dreadlocks and Afro hairdos, Gideon boots and sneakers. You can come barefooted if you wish, or in leather sandals. Scented candles and burning sage are the infusing incense at this celebration. Film the footage. Future generations should witness this. The birth of a nation, a tribe, a belonging. Her shrine is a wild heritage. You will come of age free at heart. Cleopatra, clear the pantry. There'll be cake at the party, a party with no agenda, frenzy dancing with the shadows, beautifully chaotic, beautifully chaotic. Ah! Ow! <laughs> That's a Women's Day poem. All right. <laughs> a party brews come ye who seek freedom, enter her. Kingdom, the area code is 256. Hide and seek in her afro. She's glorious creature. Sing the Gloria at her groin area. A goddess, a tribe of belonging. Oh, in this line, her shrine is a wild heritage. You will come of age free at heart. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> ah, ow. <laughs> Wow, you know, this is a this reading, um, my darling poets. Oh, we have so many people writing us asking us for your texts. And I felt the same thing. I felt the same thing. This is one reading where I would love to be able to, to share with everyone. Maybe we'll put it on our website, all the texts in original language, all the poems, because these are just magnificent. What a day. And now, my darling friend, Vera Dushtila. Vera is a Finnish playwright and screenwriter. She was the president of Finnish Pen 2019 to 2022. And I am so hoping to be with my friend this year in Helsinki. Welcome, Vera. Thank you, Judith. I really hope to see you soon also. I will read first in Finnish and then in English. Tänä yönä ei ole kuuta, eikä päivällä ollut polttavaa aurinkoa. Ikkunat eivät siis viipaloi käytäviä käsitettävän kokoisiin asioihin. On käveltävä hämärässä horjumatta, sulamatta mukaan tympeään puolivaloon. On uskottava askeliin, vaikka niiden suunta onkin kuviteltu syy, niiden tahti vain menneiden muisto. Kauhu ottaa imunsa. Kutsuu kulkemaan taakse ja selin, vetäytymään pois tulevasta ja jo tehdystä. Turvaan niihin hetkiin, joissa ennusteet olivat armollisia, häpeä ei hämärtänyt kasvoja. Raahaudun rikkinäisin raajoin, ryhtiä valheen kannatellen, ylpeyttä muille teeskennellen, vaikkei kukaan edes näe. On oletettava yleisö, ettei ryömisi. Likainen lattia kutsuu liikaa, ripustan itseni hiuksista tähtiin. Väsynyt nainen, väsyneenä yössä, hämärän hautamana, pönyn leijuessa. Etsii repeämää seinistä ja sielusta, jotta jokin luvattu valo tulisi, osuisi kasvoihin edes hetken. Näyttäisi matkalle jonkin tarkoituksen, kun kuitenkin käveltävä on. And then in English. <coughs> Tonight there is no moon, nor in the day a scorching sun. So the windows won't slice the corridors into things of a comprehensible size. One needs to walk in the dark and not stagger, not melt into the dull half-light. One needs to believe in steps, even if their direction is an imagined course, their pace just a memory of the past. Terror sucks you in, invites you to return, back turned, to retreat from what is to come and what has been done. I take your refuge in the moments where the predictions were merciful, shame was not shading the face. I lumber on with lame limbs, my posture bolstered with hope, keeping up an appearance while there's nobody who, who could see. 
one needs to presume an audience so as not to crawl. The dirty floor is too inviting. I tie my hair to the stars. A worn out woman in a weary night, hatched by the dusk, fumbling as dust, dust floats for a crack in the walls and souls so that some promised light would land on the face, even briefly, show a purpose for the path since one has to walk it anyhow. Thank you. So windows won't slice the corridors into things of a comprehensible style, size. And I also love the line, one needs to walk in the dark and not stagger. One needs to believe in steps, even if their direction is imagined. A purpose for the path, one has to walk it anyhow. Ow! Ooh! Poems of such beautiful power. And now we have a very, a very special opportunity. Um, we have the poet and author Anissa Jafari Mare of Kurdish Pen from Kurdistan, Iran. Anissa was arrested twice by the Iranian security forces because of her literary and linguistic activities. She is the editor in chief of J Magazine. She has received a scholarship from Penn, Germany, and now lives in Germany. But what's really special for us today is that Anissa will be reading the work of, Ze of Zeneb Yusufi, recognized as one of the most important current poets in Kurdistan, Iran. Writing in, Kur in Kurdish, Zeneb's work has been labeled erotic and bad literature. And she is not allowed to publish, and she's not invited to any seminar or festival or literary gathering. But we here are going to have the opportunity to hear her words and to hear her poems, for which we are so grateful to Kurdish Pen and to Anissa. Welcome, Anissa. In the depths of hanging planets, drop by drop, Seasons of falling. What snowy and snowy years I've stood as a shining loop. I'm a day hanging across a year. Then what do I need for the night, for the star, for ex extending the time? No, I'm walking under the world. My loop was fixed on the dream of a virginity which had already escaped. It had put his lips on the lips of an untimely scream during a political loss. I said to myself, all is schizophrenic, busy to play. Give up this one, bury it. No, I'm at the movie, watching a real movie. A drunk cigarette has been fallen in a garden of tomatoes and watermelons. A crow that has split all the skulls with it be. I said to myself, I will never leave you to the wind or bury. When you are coming, throw your pen at the crow. All the scarecrows are wearing black. Shredded and torn, tired and exhausted. No, I'm looking at a scarecrow in a garden in a moonlight night. He's stealing our shining water with a drunk and happy cigarette as a painting, as a new but unpleased music. Who, she is me, is trapped in the result of a scarecrow like loop. I hear all kinds of sounds in the depths of a sana, in the depths of all years. Thank you. the lips of an uninvited scream at the center of a political lust. And look at this line, we could have called the reading this, throw your pen at a crow. I hear all the sounds of all the years. Thank you, Anissa, thank you. Our next poet comes to us from Penn, Malawi, and it is our Wazi Masuka Panje. She is a literary theorist who's gone into creativity, 
editing, and translation. Wazy's work has been anthologized in several books and published widely. Welcome, Wazy. Sir, not without a word shall I go. I shall wait here until I'm heard. For my heart is bubbling, it is rumbling. You may block me, you may stop me, but none of your tricks are going to work anymore. I shall not go unless my words put you in your place and you will learn to never, ever block the truth again and always pursue peace. No way. He started it. At first, he promised us freedom, but then he gave us free doom. We resolved. And then he said, but I deserve another chance. Enough was enough. We gave him a piece of our mind. But again, he says, I will do better. Another chance, please. What is he saying? The same route again of sleeplessness, of helplessness, of bloodshed? Mm -mm. No way. Thank you. I love that. <laughs> Not without a word shall I go. I shall wait here until I am heard, for my heart is bubbling. I shall not go. Thank you, Wazy. Thank you. Well, another huge goal of mine for our poetry events, and I have Ross Holder of Penn International to thank for introducing me to Aziz Isa Elkun of Penn Uyghur, because the, the story of the genocide of the Uyghur people is something that I really, really want to bring forefront in, in our poetry work and for our voices raised today. Aziz Isa Elgun is a poet and academic, and he is the Penn Uyghur Project Director. Welcome, Aziz. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm very pleased to be part of this uh, event and uh, our respected ladies, our colleagues, and uh, I celebrate your international festival. It's uh, now in Uyghur world, we won't say happy International Women's Day. We say Uyghur women must stand for their rights, for their struggle, for, for their own freedom. Uh, your woman must be equal as a man. Uh, yes, I, I, last year during the pandemic, I was sitting in my garden looking at the beautiful roses, and I wrote a poem last year autumn, and then that poem published the uh, uh, index on censorship and the Los Angeles Review of Books. So I'm going to share that poem with you today. Uh, this poem is dedicated to the innocent millions of Uyghurs arrested, detained, and being killed in China's 21st century concentration camps since 2017. <clears throat> Roses. <clears throat> it's a morning bright sun. Another new day has started. I count all together 22 autumns and winters I have passed in exile. I don't know how many years remain before I return to the place where I belong. To the earth that my forefathers made home. I can feel the sorrow in myself. My soul shivers it's called. I inherited it all from my father whenever the memory of the disappeared homeland returns and occupies my mind. It inspires me to be a human being with dignity, 
able to call for the survival of a lost nation, able to appeal for mercy and love from the world again and again. The place where I was born has turned into a heap of ghostly relics. It only exists among the non-existence in this world full of selfishness. I am sitting in my garden chair trying to enjoy the warm sun for a minute, but it quickly covered by the rushing clouds. A steaming cup of coffee evaporates my gloom. I'm still struggling to feel myself, believing that better days will come after tomorrow. Only one day, life, maybe, will smile on us, even on the man who writes these lines. Although he lost everything, traveling on the road of no return and lived a second life, he is still a hostage to, this, to that place. He lives with constant fear. The monster has left countless stains. It has pierced me with needles. But still, I can call for justice for those who have suffered more. But my spring, but my spirit still fighting. My hope still alive. Each time I find new courage, it brings the joy of smile. Although it's autumn, my garden leaves are still green. The first rose I planted three years ago to mark my father's destroyed grave. The second rose I planted on, mother, on Ma Mother's Day last year. The third rose I planted for the unknown Uyghurs who survived inside the camps. My rose are blossoming with hope, singing a song for freedom. Without waiting for the spring, they remind us how beautiful it's to be alive, to live in peace in our beautiful world. Thank you. Now I'm going to uh, read the original in Uyghur language, uh, maybe a few words from this uh, uh, English version. Atirgül. Kuyaşlık bir seher. Yine bir yeni gün başlangan. Men hemmisi bulup yigirme üç küzünü sanıdım. Kış pesilir mi sürgünde ötüp getti. Yine kanç yılının kalgalıkını bilmeyi men. Özümge tebe makanga, ata bağlıları mukaddes ve tendep bilgen, eşu tutya zımınga kaytışka. Men vücudumdaki kaygını his kılalmayı men. Titreydi cenim soğukta, bularının hemisi mağa dadamdın miras kalgan, gayip bulup ketken vatanımdan eslimisi, kaçan ki aklımını esirge alğanda. Kısmetim beni, insanlıkın bilen izzetin işki ündeydi, bütün dünyadın, yok algan şu vatanının hayat kalgan şehitlerine tekrar ve tekrar bir katre muhabbet, bir şefkat sileydi. Gerçi küz bolsu mu, bakçamda yıpırmaklar yanına yeşil, üç yıl ilgiri üstürülgen tünce etirgül, mehrum atamının veren kılınan namsız kabrisinin hatısı bekışlanan idi. Ben ikinci etrigülünü ötken yeli, anılar bayramı günü bakacağımı tiktim. Üçüncü etrigülünü lagırlardan aman kalan namsız uyğurlar üçün tiktim. Etrigüllerim ümit bilen çeçekle batıdı. Erkinlik melodisini eğitip batıdı. Baharının kilişini kütmez gahida. Ular bilgisini eğitidi. Hayat kiliş nimirgen güzel. Seni çeşaş hem bu güzel dünyada. Thank you. Rahmet. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, so much. The memory of the disappeared homeland, the man who writes these lines. 
although he has lost everything. The third rose planted for the unknown Huigars who survive inside this camp. The first rose to mark my father's destroyed grave, the second I planted on Mother's Day. It's a beautiful musical language and we're so grateful to have it in our ears and our hearts today. Thank you, Aziz. And now, I bring you a homie and introduce to you poet, basket weaver, former Green Party elected official in Colorado, Art Good Times. Art served as San Miguel County Commissioner 1996 to 2016. He's the Western Pope. He was the Western Slope Poet Laureate 2011-2013. And he's currently the poetry editor for Fungi Magazine and Sage Green Journal. And I am proud to say he is a member of San Miguel Penn. Welcome, Art. Building alliances. If I had a hammer and not the one that busted in my hands as organizers are busted for planting trade union pegs to stretch the corporate tent. A hammer that wouldn't buckle under to repeated blows. Merciless sun, baking sidewalks, tools pushed to their limits, snapping under pressure. If I had a hammer forged of the mother's fury, yet tempered with love for all her relations, two-leggeds, four-leggeds, buried stone or spiraling seed, a hammer shaped to the will of the people. Nothing could stop us from driving a nail through the heart of the beam to begin the reconstruction. Building alliances, powerful as the wind that rips a roof to shreds or sweeps a prairie clean. Thank you. <laughs> if I had a hammer forged of the mother's fury, two-legged, four-legged, buried stone or spiraling seed, a hammer shaped to the will of the people, alliance is powerful as the wind, and the wind of our voices is powerful today. It certainly is, and thank you for singing that to us, Art. And now we are going to have the passion and clarity of Stella Nianzi, our famous and infamous Ugandan poet to complete our program. Stella Nianzi is a passionate social justice activist, and an academic living currently in Germany, where she is a scholar in the Writers in Exile program of Penn, Germany. And the poem she's going to read to us was first published by Penn de Puerto Rico Internacional. And welcome, Stella. Writing ourselves to freedom. Although Uganda's dictatorship slowly chops off our fingers, we shall continue writing bitter truths about the suffering of our people. Our shaking fingers festering with wounds from bayonets scribble painful poems about the everyday lives of our people trembling with fear of reprisal from a punitive repressive state, we shall craft wondrous poems bleeding from our oppressed hearts. The dictator's brutes can abduct and brutalize the bodies of our writers, but they will never arrest or beat up the published books and poems. The oppressor's goons can torture and break the ankles of our poets, but they will never break our powerful sentences that speak ugly truths. We are Uganda's dissident writers. We commit to critically writing ugly truths to power. We are writing ourselves to freedom. Although Uganda's autocrats squeeze hard our reverberating voice boxes, we shall continue reciting sorrowful verses about the plight of our people. 
are suffocating throats, choking with tear gas, thrown to scatter us. Rhythmically churn out sad stanzas that rhyme about the struggles of our people. Squeaking or whispering criticism against the background of their military might, we shall challenge their tankers, commandos, and bullets with our satirical words. The autocrats gunmen can knock out our writers teeth with the butts of their guns, but they will never handcuff or shackle the texts written against the vices of the state. The suppressors interrogators can electrocute the balls of our wordsmiths and our poets, but they will never kill the paragraphs and punctuation marks of our written pieces. We are Uganda's dissident poets. We commit to composing pieces that mirror society. We are writing ourselves to freedom. Thank you. Wow, yar, the power of a poem. We commit ourselves, we commit ourselves. Never arrest our books, our sentence, our paragraphs, our punctuation. We are writing ourselves to freedom. Stella, you courageously meet outrage with the outrageous and lift all our hearts to stay the course and do the work. Que viva, que mujer. <laughs> and so, and so, we're going to have a, a sweet moment now um, that's, ver that's very important to our hearts. We're going to have a little moment of celebration for our friend, the award-winning Kurdish poet, Ilhan Sami Chomek. It is our pleasure, all of us today, to send dear Ilhan birthday blessings and to share a poem of his. It is his birthday, Ilhan's birthday. This This very day in his 28th year in prison in Turkey. To Ilhan and all our Kurdish and Turkish friends and our colleagues in prison, we say, may freedom be yours soon. We are with you. And you can see on your screen that Ilhan has been serving a life sentence since 1994. And the poems that he has written from prison are an extraordinary gift to all of us. And Penn Norweg, uh, Penn, Penn Norway has had a, um, a program where they've been writing poems back and forth with Ilhan. And I'm going to read you one of his poems. This poem is called, I Give Praise to Flight. And it was written for Mena Elflin in response to her poem. And Mena Elflin is a member of Penn Wales. This poem was translated by the coordinator of this program, Caroline Stockford of Penn Norway. And here's the poem. I give praise to flight. I give praise to the embraces of women that reach right into my cell. I give praise to the wind's own knowing that it is wind. I am without a door, yet my wings splay wide as an atlas. Birds love me, I hear that delight in their songs, and the quiet of these blues and greens give me peace. There is a stairway that leads to the very height of life. I love the birds because we are brothers in hunger as the window creaks with tiredness in its frame. So then sing your song, beautiful bird. Let's go blazing to the seas, to my childhood, when I believed in all the stories, to the times when I fell and fell, grazing my knees, to the pain of my hand when it would bleed, to the wound of the skies and the earth, to the pure, bright experiment of rain. I am with the birds. Life accepts me again. Happy birthday. May you be free soon, dear Ilhan. We are thinking of you today. And that brings us full circle 
And we thank you, I thank you, I thank you, our marvelous poets. This was an extraordinary reading. I thank you for your generous gift and your dedication, your gorgeous work and your time. And all of us, we poets, we thank you, our audience, for gifting us with your time. Because now more than ever, it matters to raise our voices with skill, with passion and commitment, but without a recipient of our gifts, the circle of having our voices in the world is not completed. And as ever, we all thank all the poets are, are gathering together, I can feel you all thinking this, to thank our technical director, Tina Bika, and our Zoom technician, Neja Wilhelm, and her assistant, Mimi, whose patience, knowledge, and kindness make our phenomenal global poetry Zooms smooth, possible, and fabulous. And in everything, we owe a debt of huge gratitude to our sweet and tireless Olha Mukta, who manages with humor and grace to keep so many balls in the air for all of us at Penn. And today we send our love and prayers to our friend Pablo Bilk, who would be here with us today, except that his family is under devastating fire in Ukraine as they protect and defend their homeland. We're with you, our friend. We're with you, my friend. We're thinking of you, Pablo. For our guest today to pen, please join us in our efforts. Find your pen and befriend our mother organization, Pen International. For more information on finding your pen, we're going to post the Pen International website, the San Miguel Pen website, and my email. And we're going to post a link to donate to Penn International, because now more than ever, we must be the ones to keep our literary freedom strong. It is on us. I wanna say something. I read these poems today quietly in the dark morning by the fire, and it made me think about the global economy, those words, and I realized the poetry is the global economy. It is the world wealth moving on the gift exchange. And reading these poems and hearing the poems as you have today, sitting with these poets from all around the world and hearing the poems of our places, our times, our triumphs, our truths, our terrors, our rages, you cannot help but know in your soul that we must keep these freedoms as a renewable resource. It is a freedom we must protect with all our might. So we have an opportunity and you have an opportunity to join the other world web, Indra's net of writers that have joined hands across the globe to sing with and for each other as we have sung today for you. Thank you. And now, we're going to invite our Women's Writers Committee Chair, the very extraordinary, multi-talented Zoe Rodriguez here to close our gathering. Welcome, Zoe. Well, good morning. It's very early morning in Australia, five to five. Um, why not? Um, and good Good late morning in Mexico, good afternoon, good evening. Um, firstly, Judith, thank you. You always do an extraordinary job and I know you put a lot in. Um, and thank you to the poets who she got a lot out of. Um, I know that she rehearses hard and my goodness, it shows when we are here in our lounge rooms watching. It is such a beautifully crafted event every time. Today, I want to acknowledge and celebrate and thank Judith for coordinating something which is truly global. Truly global, you have brought us voices from so many corners of the world and they're important voices that we need to hear. Um, the language, the musicality, it's beautiful. Um, thank you poets for bringing that and your words. I was jotting down so many notes but uh, uh, about what I listened to. I echo what came through in the chat stream. Um, if the poets are amenable, I would love to be able to 
read your words on the page. Thankfully, we have a recording so we can watch them again um, and listen again, which is, of course, very important with poetry to get all the rhythm and the musicality. Um, thank you, Tina. Um, you know, you always help with this and it is just so wonderful of you. Nesha, I thought it was flawless, thank you. And Mimi the Dachshund, I'm sure was just that, that, that bit that got us right over the line. Um, these, Olha, of course, should be thanked and the London office. I also want to thank all of the people on the organising group for the Women Writers Committee. I think we're a terrific committee. I actually look forward to meeting uh, with all of you regularly, even though it's either very early in the morning or very late at night for me. Um, it's wonderful to see these faces who are so committed. As Judith says, please do donate to Penn International if you can. There are sadly so many things going on in the world where writers need our help and where Penn needs that funding to do things, to move people who are displaced um, to fight other causes. Um, I want to acknowledge very particularly um, the Ukrainian poet Ia Kiva. I can't imagine what is going on um, in Ukraine. We see news on 24 hours a day here and it is from a hell. Um, it is just so distressing and disturbing. And I will close my comments again, thank you all. But there is one line from a poem that my mother wrote when many of us were gathered in Lviv. Um, hers was a poem reflecting on the Nazi genocide in Ukraine, but I think it's very relevant to today. Um, and that line is, all we can do in the darkness is shine. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you. We do have fun at our meetings. We, we, we meet every week, but we, it's wonderful. And then we get to do things like this and share them with you. So full of the beauty of our voices together, raised in global witness, we're going to say thank you, adios, abiento, farewell, and close our voices, our resistance, by remembering our responsibility to Meryl Shimshek, to Ilhan Chomek, and to the heroic people of Ukraine. We do not forget our fellows in prison, our comadres and our compadres under attack, and we do not forget that we must always be a voice, a passionate, unstoppable voice for what we love, for what we wish to protect, and what we want to see in our world. The sage scholar, some say Rebbe Hillel said, if I am only for myself, what am I? And if not now, when? It's on us, it's on us, and it's on all of us now. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Neja, you wanna bring back everyone into presence, into the gallery so we can all wave goodbye and unmute ourselves and say goodbye? Please bring everyone visible. Let's go into gallery view, see everybody, and we can all wave. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Adios. Bala. 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 Judith. Adios. Adios. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye.